Dear Father, I just want to thank you for your grace. I want to thank you for uh, giving us what we don't deserve, which is your wrath. just want to just thank you for, for uh, calling the people out in spite of the fall of Israel and that uh, we shine as lights in the world. And I just want to just thank you for your, what you've been doing, what you are going to do in the future. Just thank you for giving us insight in those things. Just want to just thank you for all those things in Christ's name. Just want to pray for this message as well. Just want to just uh, pray for me as well. Just want to just pray for all these things. Amen. Okay. I uh, wrote down Matthew 24 here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start in there. Well, I'm going to back up actually to uh, the end of Matthew 23. Okay, the end of Matthew 23. <clears throat> Matthew 23, <laughs> Jesus is, is in the temple. Now this is the last time that he's been in the temple, that he will be in the temple during his time during this ministry on earth. Okay? Um, the, the book of Matthew, Matthew 24, gives uh, from the perspective of his explanation after he leaves the temple. Okay, the book of Luke, when it's talking about the same type of things, it's actually what's said in the temple. So when it, um, so he, you get some, you get different viewpoints. You get a viewpoint of what's heard in the temple, then you actually get some additional information of what's told outside the temple. Okay. And he, and he says, uh, verse 37, Matthew 23, verse 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Now, Jerusalem is a city, right? That's a city. So he declares about this city, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often I would, ha would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house, the house in Jerusalem. He says, your house, not my house, not God's house. He said, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, here's why. Your house is left desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Okay. Why is it desolate? Because he's leaving. Okay, And it won't be desolate until they actually acknowledge, say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> and Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Okay, now they're going to talk about the, you know, the things that, that he said while he was in the temple, okay? Now, um, this, is, this is a parallel account with uh, uh, Mark chapter 13 and Luke chapter 21. And so you can get what he's actually saying inside the temple, and then they're going to actually, you know, okay, so you said this in the temple, and they point to him, they said, and, it, and they came to him before to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Okay? Now, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came up to him, came unto him privately, privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? So they... They're going over and said, okay, you talked about these things. What are the signs to look for? And he's going to tell them, verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That's why I get so, I wonder so much, you know, I'll hear people quote and said, well, there's wars and rumors of wars. Okay. Did you read what is said in Matthew 24? But the end is not yet. I mean, I've had believers come and say, well, you know, the wars and rumors of wars, and here we are, we're coming to this, and, 
and all these things. He said, all right. He said, he, took, he gave, the, gave them what to look for. But yet nobody has said to me, he said, that, you know, of, of these group of people that have been talking about the end times and saying, yep, we see the man of, we, we see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place. They're not saying that. And that's what he's going to get to. For nation, and then he gives some other information. For nation shall rise against nations, a kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes and divide in diverse places. And all these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. <clears throat> and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. There is the significant mark. Okay? When you see that. Now what is the holy place? He just left it in chapter 23. So what is the abomination <coughs> excuse me, of desolation? Well, we need to go to Daniel in order to look at it. When we turn back to Daniel chapter, well, Daniel chapter 11, Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11, verse 31. And the arms, the army, shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily <laughs> sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Okay? So we have the abomination of desolation, which is spoken of, and that's where this is mentioned. Okay? Now what about this abomination? And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. Okay, him that know their God shall what? Do exploits. There's something that, that is being done. What are they doing? They're enduring. <clears throat> and they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword, and by flame, and by captivity, and by spoil many days. So the ones that get it, are they being persecuted? Yes. yes. <clears throat> now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help, and many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them of understanding shall fall. Ah, they were on board with it, but eventually what do they do? They drop off. They, <clears throat> they fall apart. Is that enduring to the end? No. Okay. That's the short story of it. Is he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Okay. That's the, you can't miss it. Here it is. Now why do they need to endure to the end? Because what this is doing, this method of them falling off as things get rougher and rougher. I mean, people are getting killed. People are getting attacked. Okay. Just for their faith. What is it? It's to try them. It's a test. It's a trial by the fire of affliction. They're being attacked. It's getting rough. It's nothing but misery. It's fear. It's all these things. And what do they need to do? Rely day by day by day. <clears throat> What's that? Ah, okay. So... So they're, so they're surviving on a daily basis. Now, do you remember a time when they survived, when the children of Israel survived on a daily basis? In the wilderness. They survived, okay, in the wilderness. 
they were also surviving that way during the ministry of Christ, right? He said, don't bring two coats. Don't bring an extra bag. Okay, don't bring extra, you know. And, and what does he say? The laborer is worthy of his reward. Okay, all right. Why? Don't, you'll get taken care of of what you'll eat. God prepares for, takes care of the birds. You see that? Here's the example. They don't toil. They just go and get what's there day by day. All right. So now let's think about this. In the wilderness, <clears throat> the wilderness for 40 years, God provided for them in a desert wasteland. They never would have made it. They had consumed all the animals, okay, and there would have been nothing left unless they had the protection and the providing from the Lord day by day. They needed water, okay. They needed this consistent source of grain, okay? Now, <clears throat> and that was, the, that was a pattern, uh, you know, to try them and prove them as well. The only day God said is put up for the next day is what? On the preparation day before the Sabbath. God will provide enough for two days worth the day before. Put it all up and don't cook the next day, Okay? There's the major problem with the guy that was picking up sticks. Okay? The guy that was in the desert. Do you need to, a fire to warm you during the day? No. You need shade. Okay? Did God provide the shade? Cloud by day. Now, in a desert, it gets cold at night, right? There's a fire by night. What does a fire do? Provide the warmth. So, here they are in the, in the hostile environment. But yet they had the protection. So they didn't need a fire because they were cold. The only reason to start a fire would be to what? Cook. So what does that feller do? He collects the sticks, but he didn't kindle the fire yet. He said, well, you were working on the Sabbath day. You were doing that. Okay. And he asked the Lord what they were to do with them. And what they were to do with them, God says, he said, well, take them outside the camp and stone them to death. And then he says, here's how you remember. Don't mess around with this. And he says, you put fringes on your garment. Okay, now these fringes are, <clears throat> are like tassel. Okay, it's like a lock of hair. And that tassel is a remembrance of, listen, this be on your head, like your hair. Okay, this is these, remember the law, remember the consequences. God will take care of you, but you need to follow God's way. Okay? That, that was there. Okay? <clears throat> now, verse 34, Daniel eleven thirty-four. 34. Now, when they shall fall, okay, oh, sorry, verse 35. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them to purge and make them white even to the time of the end, yet it is for a time appointed. So during this time, some of them are going to get killed in their faith. Ain't doing it. No way, Jose. I know it's going to be rough for me. You might kill me. Okay. Book of Revelation backs that up and says, listen, their works are over. They can rest now. All right. They were faithful till the end. They were killed. And now that's over. They don't have any, they, their, their trying period is over. They survived the test. Okay. Now the ones that recant, the ones that jump on in with the, what they're not supposed to be doing, what happens to them? They're cut out. Okay. <clears throat> now, verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will and shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods so does that king sound like he is, he's in he's in alignment with what jehovah would want doesn't sound like it to me <clears throat> and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished for that is determined shall be done Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God. 
for he shall magnify himself above all. Any God and the God of gods. Okay? The God of his fathers, the God of Israel. He says he's above all them. <clears throat> but in his estate, this is his position, okay? his office or his position, shall he honor the God of forces and a small g God whom his fathers knew not. Shall he honor with gold, silver, and precious stones and pleasant things. Okay? So there's what is going to be the, the, the big symbol. Yes? That sounds, that sounds like he's going to be a Jew. The, the logical thing would be is, all right, so here's this guy he's going to, well, let's, let's turn to chapter 12, and let's keep with that idea. What's that? So the I okay, so is that sounds like he's going to be a Jew, which I agree with. Okay? All right. Now, um eh, let's see here. Let's stay in uh let's stay in chapter 11. Okay? Now, coming through chapter 11, you have when you read this as far as I'm concerned, it's the most confusing thing you can read <clears throat> in the book of Daniel because you have this, this constant back and forth of the king of the north and the king of the south, and the king of the north and the king of the south, and, the king, and it goes back and forth, back and forth. It's hard to keep track of who's who and who's what. Okay? But what we wind up with is, is that this is the king of the north. Now let me draw my homely map here. <clears throat> So we have everybody know what this is here? It's someone with a cowboy boot kicking a football. That's Italy. Okay? Here's what we here's Greece. Okay. Here's the Aegean Sea. Here's the Mediterranean Sea. Here's North Africa. Okay, Jerusalem is here. Okay, kind of got our bearings. <clears throat> so somewhere here, we're talking about the king of the north and the king of the south. And the king of the north and the king of the south. Now, when I go down a rabbit trail that I don't really, wasn't, and I, I don't want to spend too much time here, but I'm going to give you my convictions about the book of Daniel and the image that Nebuchadnezzar sees. Okay? It starts off with a head of gold. <clears throat> Out here is the Persian Gulf. Here's, okay, we have Babylon, thou art that head of gold. So remember Nebuchadnezzar's image starts with the head, then it goes to the shoulders, then it goes with the middle, then it goes with the legs, and now all the way down to the feet, toes. Okay, so as this image is being developed, thou art that head of gold. Here's our head, it's this area here. Then we have the Medes and the Persians. Now we have the arms. We have this area here, and we have this area here that's added to it. It gets bigger. We get farther along down through history, and we get all the way down here. <clears throat> we got a guy from here, Alexander the Great. Alexandria. Okay? Here's where our middle is. Okay? And so the kingdom grew. It went from this to then. It, then this was added to it. Was it was kind of this. Then these arms were added to it. Then we get the belly is added to this thing, and the kingdom is now here. Okay, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. All right. 
Then we have talks about eventually here, we come down around here, and I'm not very good at drawing Europe and all that stuff. Then we wind up with Spain here, and we have Morocco here. Okay? And this is the Strait of, come on, get a piece of the rock. The Strait of, what is that rock called? Gibraltar? Gibraltar? Okay? <clears throat> it's like eight miles between here and here at the shortest point. Just a little passageway. Okay? <clears throat> So, if my logic on this is, is that this, this image has grown from the head, way over here starting, then we get the arms, then we get the belly, and we build these legs that are more down here in the future, okay, these legs, these legs, and we wind up with the feet somewhere in here. That's how I take that, okay? I'm not hearing a lot of people say that, but that's how I take that. I take this as this growing image. Starts off of the head, then we get media per okay, so Babylon, then we get media Persia. So if we were going to tip it down and put the man here, his head would be over on this end here, and his feet would be out here. Okay? That's how I would take it. Now if we look historically, how this has looked over time when Alexander the Great, in his 12 year campaign, his territory came from here, went all the way over and winded up in Babylon, and he finished his career dead in Babylon without even being in a war. Just dies. Okay? 12 year campaign, he took everything from here that way. Okay? Alright, so that was fulfilling prophecy. <clears throat> but then we don't get who the next part is, we get some pictures of what it is, and it's described as the legs. Well, by the time Rome was done, okay, the Roman Empire, it was from here all the way that way, okay? So that's why so many talk about a renewed Rome coming back into power. I'm talking about Vatican, okay? We're talking about Catholic Church coming in and controlling this, okay? So that, that's, where that, that's where that idea comes from, okay? Now, <clears throat> what Rome was... What Rome was doing during this time, uh, with that, and, and which I don't disagree, but like I said, as I'm looking at this, Rome is not in power of these areas here now, but now we have these toes. So I'm looking for five things over here and five things over here. That's where I'm looking. I'm not seeing it right now, but that's where I'm looking. Okay? Take that for what it's will. <clears throat> They will wind up back in Babylon, back over at the head eventually, just like everybody else has. Okay, <clears throat> but all that means, but it's not finished out. That's the times of the end. All right. So there's the perspective that I take the Book of Daniel from. I take it as this is a picture of what happened. It, it, you know, geographically in the campaign of control. That's how I take it from. Now, we have this description. The king of the north and the king of the south. Okay, king of the north, king of the south. King of the north, king of the south. And we have this thing that's talked about, talked about, talked about, talked about. What winds up is, is that... <clears throat> Here's Cyprus. Of the territory that's left, I can't get there because we don't have the time for it and that's not what we're studying, but that guy will come, some, you know, we're going to have an area here and we're going to have an area here. We're going to have a king of the north and a king of the south. And the king of the north winds up here in Jerusalem and he declares himself, first of all, he walks into, you know, he, he <clears throat> he actually goes in there and he regards himself higher than God, than the God of Israel. What, make, what does that make him? That makes him the God. Now, let me just ask you, where is Jesus Christ in the whole thing according to what the Bible says? Is he far above all? All right, so that's why he's called the antitype. We have the type, Jesus Christ. 
Then we have the anti-type, which is a mimic, a copy of the type. Okay? So he's going to get he's going to walk in there and he's going to get incur it, he's going to get accepted. Now you tell me, just logically, let's think about this. What Jew is going to allow a non-Jew to walk into the temple and declare themselves that they are the Messiah? What's, I, I can't find any, any logical reason why it wouldn't be a Jew. Okay? Now, he's going to be an Assyrian Jew. Okay? He's called the Assyrian. Okay? But, he's, but why would I say he's going to be a Jew? Because the Messiah is a Jew. Now, he has to fit some things. Okay? He's going to have to be the seed of David. Right? Right. Because, right? That... That's, that's what all these things are. But here's the big difference. Is, is that when he... Did Jesus Christ exalt himself or did you say, I do the will of my Father? Okay. What did the Father do? He said, this is my Son whom I am well pleased. What did the Holy Ghost ministry do? He says, talk about... This is what Jesus said. And he's reminding them. John chapter 14, He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's the Holy Spirit's ministry in that program is to remind them these things, right? So does it sound... None of them is running themselves up higher than the other. The other ones always just point to the other one, right? So it's this non-narcissistic system. But what does this guy do? I am God. Right? I am above the God of Israel. I am the I am. I, I am above. Okay? Now, so we have this, we have this back and forth battle and problem between the king of the north and the king of the south, the king of the north and the king of the south. Eventually, the king in the north winds up in here. Okay, as, he, as this campaign goes through. Now, there's some area here that he does not take control of. That's Ammon, Moab, and Edom. Okay. I'm going to test your, test your memory. <clears throat> Ammon, Anam, Ammon and Moab, who are they? Who are they of? Which family are they in? They are out of Lot. Okay, so Lot has these daughters, right? <clears throat> Remember the story about the, you know, the account of that? Let's get her father drunk. That way we can have children. We've got no man. Okay? Okay, the, the incestuous children of Lot. Okay? Ammon and Moab. And these are their area. Whoa, let me get this up here. <clears throat> these are these tribes that come out of there. Okay? And these are their territories. The Antichrist does not get this area. There's a reason for that. It is a place for the children of Israel, once the Antichrist comes into power, walks into the temple, declares himself as God. Okay, Matthew 24. Keep, keep uh, uh, Daniel, come to Matthew 24. I lost my spot, of course. I pulled my paper out of there. <clears throat> Matthew 24, I want to say around verse 10, 11. <clears throat> ah, sorry, verse 15. Verse 14. And this gospel of kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore, 
see the abomination of desolation. The gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom is coming, is what they are to preach. And when they, see, therefore, when they see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, it's verse 16, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. So when the Antichrist sets himself up, says there, I'm the Messiah, I'm God, I'm above God, and oh yeah, and here's how you worship, it looks like this, you worship an idol, look at the idols talking, that's how they're, to, it's a definite identifier, okay? So they have it, but, <clears throat> so then what are they to do? Verse, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. And it says, it's immediate. Okay? Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything from his house. Neither let him which is in the field return to take his clothes. Woe unto them of a child and give suck in those days. Why? Because you're, because you're carrying your child and you're just leaving. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the word, world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. Except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those that flee, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there believe it not. So don't get tricked in this whole thing. Head to the mountains. Where are the mountains? Now next, in Jerusalem, next to the temple, is what's called, okay, the Mount of Olives. Okay, it's another hill just to the east. That's still in Judea. So that's, okay, so that's not, that's not the mountains to go to. Okay, they need to, they need to, them that are in Judea, flee to the mountains. They leave the territory. Right now, this territory, who knows their geography over here today? What area is this? J -j 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 Jordan. You okay? It's known as Jordan. Well, it's Trans Jordan, now it's known as Jordan. Okay? They can't just go run over the river there right now today. You know why? Literally, so I've watched people that are, that are, that are going through a baptismal in the Jordan River. <clears throat> there is, I mean, the, 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 the property line is right down the, the river. And on the opposite side, so here's people going down in there, they're going through their ceremonial baptismal, okay? And right on the other side of the river are people standing there with automatic weapons. Border guards. You can't cross the border. Well, you could try. You, you, you could try. It's probably not going to turn out so good for you. I'm, okay? So literally, like I said, I'm watching them like, look at, the, we're, United States, we're not used to anything like that. Okay? North or south. Okay? Do we, have, do we have a bunch of armed guards standing in the Canadian border? And vice versa? No. Not like, not like that. Not, it's like, well, here's my machine gun and I'm standing here and there's another guy that's 10 feet away and, you know, I mean, it's not like that. It doesn't look that way in, to the south. Do we have hostile relations with our neighbors? No, we don't. We might have disagreements, but we don't have a hostile relationship like it's like, you try to come over here, pal, and it's not going to turn out good for you. You stay in your own country. And if you are going to try to come over here, there's a certain process and, and customs and everything like that and... All, all this thing, which we have that as well, but like I said, it's a hostile neighborhood right between them. Okay? So that, I mean, we, we are so pamp, have life so easy here. We don't see the reality of this. Okay? Now, <clears throat> my point of this is, is that, so during this time, they're going to leave. Okay? Now, I've said Petra, could be Petra, could be something else. But here's what I do know, is, is that the king of the north doesn't have this area. 
Where do we find the mountain areas? Over here. Okay? So what do we, you know, that, that's, that's my point, is that they actually have to leave the territory to a territory that the Antichrist isn't in control of yet. Does that make sense? Where would you, if, if all of a sudden, <clears throat> let's just think about this. Let's say we had this, this terrible invasion, okay, that comes from the south of, southern United States and it's working its way up here like just like a whirlwind and it's coming from the south it's like a line it's like brrr, coming this way where am i going we're all, i'm going north okay why because then they're fighting another country too okay and they don't have a foothold there yet okay that's that's very reasonable and not illogical okay now <clears throat> Right. Right. So now, what do they have to live? Day by day. They leave with nothing. All right. Now, when the children of Israel left Egypt, the, 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 the language that's used is that you're thrust out. Okay? You are thrust out, and you don't have a choice, like a birth. Does the child say, nope, want to stay in for a couple more days, a couple more weeks, it's good in here? Warm and cozy and I'm eating good. No. Boom. You're leaving. Okay? So the idea is leave and don't look back. Remember Lot's wife. Okay? So they're to exit. And there is a place prepared for them, which we can read about in Revelation chapter 12. Okay? Now... Here's, so where we're at with these things is that the big thing to remember is, is that there is a competition between here and here and here and here and here and here. We don't really see that today in our world current events. We don't see this attacking and this attacking and this attacking and this attacking. Okay? So, you know, people that are trying to say that you know, we're, we're living in the book of Revelation right now. I disagree because that's not what we're seeing, okay? I don't disagree because that's what I was taught. I disagree because that's what I'm seeing in current world events, okay? <clears throat> right. So, so these markers are there. But what's the big key feature for them is, is that that's when they're to leave. They know at that moment. And then when you hear, oh yeah, Christ is over here, Jesus is over here, and they're like, nope, 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 nope. That's not it. Verse 27. Matthew 24, 27. For as lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. We get that. Deer gets clipped on the road. When do, when do we see eagles on the ground? When we have a roadkill. Okay. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Okay, now, that is talked about in Acts 2 by Peter. Okay, and he said, so is Peter thinking that this is, this is how this is going to play out? And the answer is absolutely yes, he is. Okay, Peter's not my apostle. Peter was not giving information to me. He was talking to the, you know, Judea, Israel, you men of Israel. Okay, so on and so forth. Yeah, that's who he was talking to. Why? Because that is totally rebel, relevant to what is going on in Israel's future history. Okay? So, <clears throat> but we just read about verse 29. Immediately af after the tribulation of those days. So the tribulation of those days are when you see the what? The abomination of desolation is the marker that's the key thing. 
Right now, we don't even have a temple for him to walk in to. Now, the nation of Israel wants to build a temple real bad. Really bad. Okay? And they're going to need to build one for prophecy to fulfill. Okay? But even if they build the temple tomorrow, that does not mess up any of our dispensational teaching. Okay? Dispensational Bible study. All right. Was the temple there when Paul was on the earth? Yes. Absolutely. Okay? So it's not an issue with having a temple. The issue is when we want to say, all right, we need to find, figure out something new because we're messed up if the abomination of desolation walks in and does that. And then we go, all right, well, I tell you what, we need to back up and we need to figure out what's really going on. Okay? Now, do I believe that that's going to happen? I believe it's going to happen, but I believe we're not going to be here to see it. Why? Because I've read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay? We don't see Jesus Christ come to the earth with that. Okay? We meet the Lord in the air. That's our hope. Okay? So now, one more thing here. So the... This... Uh, I just ripped my Bible. Shoot. Um... Come with me to Daniel chapter 12. <clears throat> verse 10. Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. They're going to go through the fire of tribulation. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice hath, shall be taken away, and the abomination that make it desolate set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Okay? That is roughly, okay, it's a little over three and a half years. Okay? A little over three and a half years. Depending how you do your math, depending what you count for a year, biblical year versus what our actual calendar year work out to be and everything like that. Now, <clears throat> well, yeah, there, it's a developmental thing coming into that. Okay? And you shall enter peaceably. <clears throat> now, Verse 12, blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the 1,305 and 30 days. Okay? That's 1,335, how we would say it. Okay? 1,335. But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Okay? At the end of the 1,335 there is going to be Daniel. Now, how is he going to be there without something supernaturally going on? Okay? Stand in thy lot. You're part of it. Daniel. Daniel will be a part of the end of that. That's what it says. So I believe it. Okay? So now... My point of all this is, is that everything hinges for timing. You know there's, there's a definite knowing that you've got the days from after the time of the abomination of desolation. So they have, they have a days that are shortened. Does that make sense? So that they can survive it. 
So they have a no they so they have a known end time. It isn't like, yeah, it's gonna end sometime. No, they have an idea. They have numbers. All they have to do is just stick to it, in spite of the off, terrible, awful things that are happening to them. Saying, so, you know what? I've got a book. I've got words that have said this. I, Daniel's going to stand in that lot. I've got other information that gives me, um, you know, you know, confirmation of what's going to happen, the timing of it. So no, 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 no way. I'm not missing the deal this thing okay I am going to survive the test okay now part of how they're going to survive the test is sharing what they have as the Lord provides and that's going to be a part of it that's also going to be the identifier between them too because they should all be pretty much so looking pathetic okay there shouldn't be anyone that's looking great. That's why, you know, in the discussion Gary and I were having this morning, talking about, you know, the book of James. The book of James is actually talking about the rich man. And you are honoring them more than the poor man. And those things shouldn't be so. Well, why shouldn't they be so? It should be... I got it, I can disperse it. I don't got it, I can't disperse it, God will provide. That's, that's just, that's the way of it. It's on a day-by-day basis. Yeah. That is the trial of it, because you know what, some days they're, I'm going to suspect they're going to be miserable. Really miserable. All right, remember... The mark of the beast. All I got to do is take the mark. And I can't eat. All I can do is take. I, I can take the mark. And now I can feed my children. I take the mark. I can. You, you understand the, the temptation that's going to be there. It's like we just need to hold on for another. We're all right. You know of our time period that we've been through this. You know of our. You know <clears throat> 1260 days. Portion of this. You know, I, I, you know I've, I've gone through a thousand days. All right? I've got 260 to where these things are really going to play out. And then when I get to the 1335, everything's going to be fine. And if I die before that, or if my spouse dies before that, or if my children die before that, that's okay. That takes faith. Right? And you know what's going to happen? The parents are going to be against the children, and the children are going to be against the parents. And I suspect within the household, husbands and wives might be split up too. That's how important that is with that. Okay? Now, let's come to 1 Thessalonians. We don't have to worry about that. Well, I was uh, uh, Revelation 13. I just want to add to this a little bit. <clears throat> Revelation 13. I okay well just start in verse 1 Revelation 13 verse 1 and I stood upon the sand in the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon the horns ten crowns and upon the heads the names of blasphemy and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now who is the dragon? Back up to chapter 12. Verse 
Verse 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Back up to verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Back up a little bit more. <clears throat> verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Okay? And the woman were given two wings of an eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place where she is nourished for a time. That's a year. Times. Two years and a half time. That's a half a year. Add them all up, you get three and a half years from the face of the serpent. Okay, so he's called the dragon, he's called Satan, Satan, and he's also called the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Now my description of what's going on out here, that's this. Okay. When he comes into here and this happens, they leave, right? Now, Jerusalem is inside Judea. Okay? And they flee and he goes to get them. Okay? Sends out likely an army, okay? When we have the flood used and things of that, all right, we have a bunch of we have a bunch of descriptive language that paints a picture for us. It's a word picture. Okay? We have the dragon. We have the serpent. We have the woman. Okay? Woman is believing Israel, the remnant. Jerusalem, believing Jerusalem. Okay? <clears throat> and the, verse 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of what? They got both. Got to have the commandments of God, okay, whichever that is, but what do they also have? The testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, now Paul says this in, in Romans chapter 10, I believe it is, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, okay, that's that's. That's driven at Israel. That's driven at the non-believing Jew who's the deny and believe with thy heart. Okay? Confessional is a part of the Jewish religion. Okay? When they, when they turn to the Lord, they are to acknowledge what they've done. That is a part of their religious system. Okay, so it's nothing new for the Jew. Now, it isn't, well, then we all have to have a public confessional now that we can be saved after this far long into it. No, by the time Paul is actually talking about that in Romans, he's already talk, he's talking about the unbelieving Israel. And you know what? Any unbelievers or unbelieving Israel itself, if it confesses it, that changes things. Then they would be accepted. Okay? Then when we get into chapter 13, verse 1, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast. Now we're going to get some more word picture here. Okay? Here's some things about this campaign of the Antichrist. Verse 3, And I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wander after, wandered after the beast. He had a deadly wound, and then it was healed. Does that sound like miraculous recovery? Yes. Do we know, okay, Jesus Christ was crucified, right? Hung him on a cross, a tree, 
Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree. He was put in a tomb. He was dead for legal three days, three nights. And what happened? He was healed, right? He's alive. Okay, he was given life. The Bible says in Acts 13 is, is that this day I have begotten thee. That's the day when Jesus was given life. He wasn't given life in the manger. He wasn't given life inside Mary. He was alive before that. Why? He was God. He's from everlasting. He was never a created being. So how do you beget a never created being? He has to die. So, that, so then he could be given life. Okay, that's, that's different than what, um, you know, JW.org will say. That's different than uh, the Mormon doctrine will say. Okay? This is Bible doctrine. Bible doctrine. The only way that he could be a possibly, think about this reasonably. If he's always been, if he's from everlasting, when was he created? He wasn't. When was he ever given life? He wasn't until he died. Now, humans, animals, and all these other beings give life, right, at conception. All right? But he had life before conception, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? That's who he is. So the only possible way the scripture could be fulfilled with a being that's from everlasting is that he died. Okay? Right? There's two reasons he had to take on flesh. One of them is, is, so, is, is, is that to die, but the other one is, is a kinsman redeemer. He had to be of the family. He had to be a human to redeem the humans because the human is why death entered, right? Right, okay, all right. That's, now, we're now we're into Romans 5. So if one human could cause all of the human race to fall under death, if that is a law, which it is, right? Death rates one apiece. Anybody, right? Then it is conceivably possible there is another other side of the coin. Then one, then one person can give life to all. But here's the kicker. The give life to all is by those that believe God chose, chooses. If you believe, then you get life. And God takes care of it. Okay? So if one is capable of putting all of humanity in the other, one can redeem humanity. Okay? And he can do it. That, that was a, that's, a, that's a legal precedent that was placed. And it, and, it, and it passed time. It had been proven time and time and time and time and time and time. Even before the law. Paul says, all men died. Okay? Even if they didn't follow the same sin of Adam's transgression, no doubt they still died. So what did he have? He, had the, the, he was the corporal head. What did he see? He was the king. Okay? The king's decision affected all of humanity. What does the king's decision, Jesus Christ, do? Affects all humanity. But God put a condition on it. You've got to trust that he's it. 
right? That's the condition, okay? Now, no, no, no. But the other, but the, but the other thing of it is too is that remember when his ministry started was at the Jordan River, okay, and it was a three and a half year ministry, okay. Once he was anointed, first he was washed, right? That's what you do for a priest. That's what you do to, you go through a cleansing ceremony, okay? And he was cleansed by John the Baptist, a priest, a thoroughbred. Dad is of the priesthood, mom was of that lineage of the priesthood, goes all the way back, and they were perfect. That's what the Bible says. Right? They are perfect in all their fulfilling of doing everything. Okay? They were, as far as God is concerned, they were perfect. They have this son, and that son, rather than going and doing service in the temple, he's outside of the okay, in fact, he's on the other side. He's actually on the other side of the River Jordan. Why? Because the temple is defiled. Okay? And it's a show of that. And what did you come out to see? I said, you came out to see a prophet? And Jesus says, more than a prophet. That's what you came to see. You came to see the real deal. You came to see prophecy being fulfilled because he's the one that prepares the way for the Lord. And he says, that man right there. How do you know it? Because he has sandy blonde hair and semi-blue eyes and, you know, really nice looking hair and wears a nice white. No. I said, I saw the spirit come down on him, rested on him like a dove. God told me that. That's what it was. It wasn't our goofy pictures that we have portraying him. Okay. He says, no, that's how I knew him. I knew him not. Except what? Okay. He had the criteria. Now, Yep. I do all this stuff here in order to to give this. So we have this key point is when when we are in Revelation chapter twelve, and we in chapter chapter twelve verse fourteen, we have a period of three and a half years. Okay. Now we if we do the math. In Daniel, that lines up with the same. So it's very important to know who the Antichrist is. And also, the Antichrist has something to do. He has a job that he's doing. God's using him for that. And what's he doing? He's bringing out unbelieving Israel. And he's bringing out those that are going to, that really aren't pure, meaning they really don't follow through to the end. Okay? It's a trial by fire over a period of time. Okay? It starts off first with the first three and a half years. This, this life's rough. Okay? That gets rid of the majority of it. Then at the end, it gets, it gets really bad to get rid of the little flex. Like, it's purification of silver. Okay? You burn out the dross. And that's what this is all about. So it's very important. So now, the day of Christ as I see it, okay, that's being talked about, that's been talked, Paul's the only one that says the day of Christ. Is nothing for us to be afraid of. In fact, you know, he'll confirm you until the end, until that day of Christ. So that day of Christ is a day of recognition, okay? Now, what does that all look like? I can't tell you. Why? I don't know. But I do know it's something that's farther along. Why? Because it's confirmed until the end with that. Now, the day of the act, the, the wrath of God coming out on them is for absolute certain. 
at least three and a half years. Okay, so now we have that. So now what are we, now what are we doing? Okay, we have the inflaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God in, in uh, second, first Thess uh, second Thessalonians chapter 1. Let's go back to 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. So as we're reading this, we have no, if we read our Bible progressively, we have no reason to be afraid of the day of Christ. It's a good, it's a good event for us. It's something that God's taking care of. Jesus Christ is maintaining for us. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 2. Okay? That's where it talks about that. There's nothing for us to be worried about. And if 2 Thessalonians in verse 8, in verse 7, and to you who are troubled, rest with us, when God whoops up on the people that are being hard on, paraphrased by Justin, okay? Verse 9, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be glorified in all them that believe. Now, I do believe that what they're talking about there is that second coming of Christ when he lands on planet earth. Okay? Okay. I don't think they're actually ta they're talking about we meeting the Lord in the air. Because there's two groups of people. Both of them are believers, but what are ones? Saints. Glorified in his saints and the what? And all them that believe. What's where when he comes back to planet Earth to rage war, is there a glorification? Is it, it, there's a glorification glorified in his saints, and there's here they are. Think about that. Think about those people that have made it through. He's here. Here comes the king riding the white horse. Okay? Is that first white horse of Revelation? No. No. First horse of Revelation, is that Jesus Christ? No. No, no. Not, no. Maybe it's the beginning of the day of the Lord. What's that? The, that rider and that white horse, we have all those things. What do we have? we have? We have the plague of, we've got war, we've got pestilence, we've got hunger. All those horsemen, those are those, are those plagues. Right, but is that Jesus Christ coming and doing it? No, they're opening the seals. There's two, no, there's the type and the anti-type. Just, just, just keep this concept in mind. There's the type and the anti-type. The anti-type's going to look like the type. Okay? Now these things have to pan themselves out in order to purge and try them. Then at the end, what happens? Da -da 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 -da! Charge! Okay? And here comes this great big army. Okay, and then there's some things that, you know, we can, we can, we can have with that. Now, chapter 2 of, first, of Second Thessalonians starts, I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. 
That's two things. Okay? He's coming for the punishment with everlasting of destruction to them who obey not God and are gathering together unto him. You could take it two ways. Or you could take it as Jesus Christ coming but not hitting planet earth and are gathering together. Either way you take that, you come to the same, I come to the same conclusion. There's nothing to be worried of that you soon be shaken in mind nor be troubled neither spirit by word nor letter as from us as the day of Christ is at hand. There is nothing for us to fear Nothing for them to fear. Nothing previous in Paul's epistles, if we read this progressively, for us to be, we have everything that we've just got to confirm. This is the first introduction of that. So I'm going to take it from that perspective, and I'm going to carry on with that next week because I'm out of time. But we covered a lot of good ground with this other stuff too, okay, to see the things that are happening. Now, We don't have to worry about this. All right? We shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed in a moment. Right? In twinkling of an eye. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay? And I'm mixing the verses together. Okay? But the concept of it is there. But when you're talking with somebody, and they're talking about these other things, like I said, I'm, you know, I've had... Too many people ask me about, you know, it's like, well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm looking for the Antichrist to come. And I said, I'm not. It's impossible right now. We don't even have a temple to go into. Okay. At Paul's time, when this was written, they did have a temple where he could run into. He could show up. Right now, we don't have that. We're not anywhere close to that. What's that? Right, and that glorious appearing of that great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. What's that blessed hope? Redeemed body. I can't wait for it. I know Gary can't wait for it with his, and I know Diane can. Why? Because I've talked to all of them too intimately about that. Okay? All right. We get, I, I get that I'm a sinner. Okay? Even if I don't do something, do I want to do stuff? You better believe it. And sometimes I fail, and I do stuff. Okay? I am looking for that answer to Romans 7 of the problem. Okay? Which is my resurrection. Which is your resurrection. A body that doesn't die, and it doesn't sin. Because it doesn't have a sin curse. It's been remedied. Until that time, the book gives us the standard of how we should live while we're fighting the uphill battle the whole way. Okay? All right. So there's hope. All right. With that, let's pray. Dear Father, I just want to thank you for the promises that you give us, that that you've included us in. Thank you for taking care of it. Thank you for making intercession for us. Thank you for all these things. Thank you for condemning your son so that we wouldn't have to be. And that's the best message we could have. And thank you for giving the warning that there is something to be saved from. And if that's a motivator for us to have it talking to somebody, or I can't think of a better one because they're in danger. Just with all these things, amen.